minutes, there will be a question and answer session. So uh, right. we are not sure. Maybe there will be 25, 30 persons or 40 persons. Uh, we are not sure. Uh, now the people right. will slowly start coming. But there are 50 persons have shown interest in your in your presentation. But at the last mm -hmm. moment, how many people join? We are not yep. sure. OK. Yep. I understand, yeah. Yeah, Jürgen, uh, Jürgen, another small request. Uh, will you be able to join in our conference in Goa in the month of September 2024? This will be held in Goa yep. uh, along with Indian Institute of Metals. It is going to be a massive conference mm -hmm. because the Indian Thank Institute you. of Metals are with us. So please let us know if you are uh, uh, planning to participate. We will, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, already AKW and other companies have, uh, German companies have shown interest. Yeah, please tell yes. me. Yep. At the moment, the tendency is more not to join. OK. Uh, because uh, we already organize uh, uh, two seminars um, yes. at the same time. Okay. Uh, one in one in Brazil and one in Turkey. So okay. this, this limits my availability in September. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can you depute somebody for this conference? Uh, let let me check with uh, uh, with uh, the the sales team. Okay. At the moment we at the moment we have lost two guys. Um, and uh, we have just replaced one, so we are a bit short in in uh, personnel at the moment. Okay. okay so this okay. is why it is mm. a little bit difficult for me to say mm. what. <laughs> no, what no is available worry. In no worry. Yep. No worry. This is just to, to uh, give you a small reminder uh, because we are getting quite a good response, and uh, and India is now you know many new alumina plants are coming up in India. So this is the time. Mm -hmm. to be in India because two new alumina plant has been already planned in the state of Orissa. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and uh, plants are also going for expansion. So that's why I was just thinking that if you can plan yep. to come to India. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, India is a hot spot for new uh, for additional alumina production. Yes, 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 yes. All efforts are being made although we are struggling around 8 million tons but you will see in another two years or three years india will cross 10 12 million ton because there are new alumina plants almost two new alumina plants have been planned already and uh, maybe the construction may also start within six months period in those plants mm. yeah and vedanta is going for expansion yeah yeah please please yeah. Hmm. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that's that's uh, that's the development in India. Just to tell you, otherwise, uh, our conference is getting quite a good response. Are you going to AQW Alumina Quality Workshop? Uh, yes, yes. I have a presentation on the Wednesday. Okay. Uh, same subject. It's about digester blow-off filtration. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you will be in Dubai during this uh, April, in the month of April, it is, no? In this conference is? Yes, that's right. It's uh, the, I think it's the last week of uh, of April, and the week yes. before, I will present a paper on the paste in Melbourne. Okay. And the week before, I will have a filtration seminar in Perth. Okay. That is also with the... Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I have a busy year, uh, especially I have a, a busy uh, April and May ahead of myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No, we got confirmation from many companies. Uh, AK, uh, for example, uh, AKW has already confirmed uh, our our hydrocyclone people, and uh, many many companies have confirmed their participation. So it's good. Okay, please, please go ahead. Maybe, maybe next time, sometime in India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. mean, the the venue of Goa, of course, is very attractive. <laughs> uh, Goa is yeah, a beautiful place. Yeah, no doubt <laughs> yeah. in it. 
people that's yeah. why they told that are organized in goa many companies will come <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah and i i would love to come and bring my wife with me so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe next time <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah okay and this time matso companies have also supported us matso normally from germany mm -hmm. on, only matso i think they have uh, office uh, somewhere near uh, uh think frankfurt they have office in frankfurt i think mm -hmm. yeah they yeah. are they are also supporting this time so because mm. of this new development of alumina refinery so many companies yep. are interested yeah of course yeah mm. yeah unfortunately we couldn't find a, a suitable cooperation partner in india because that would have strengthened our position in india yeah mm. okay 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 but some chinese companies are quite active in india and mm. one company i know they are making filter with this chinese company corporation mm -hmm. so yep. so um, ca can we help you i don't know i, mean, I am not in field of filters i am basically on bauxite alumina in general but yeah. the filter so you you are looking for a partner here in india no definitely yes we are looking for a partner in india and uh, so the the general idea is that uh, let's say a majority of parts is manufactured by our partner and we just provide the the special parts like control heads and all and, and, and okay. things like that okay so that would be a perfect setup yeah i understand no no it, it makes sense to produce in india and then mm -hmm. just uh, give a vital part or the imported part is maybe a vital part of the equipment and filters uh, yep yep yeah, i just understand some parts that I understand. Just some parts that contain intellectual property or even patents that we have. Yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So still you are looking for a company? Yes, we are still looking for a company. So if you have uh, one or two or three names, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay, let me check. Let me check. Uh, because I know one Indian company which is in the filter, but they are we are talking to Chinese. But uh, mm -hmm. I will try to see if there are some companies available uh i can introduce because now many of german companies are making um, drum scrubbers in india many mm. types of uh, 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 other equipment uh, beneficiation equipment and then uh, mm. some uh, alumina plant equipment is also being made in india so i will may suggest you two three names you can directly interact with them if if, yep. if some company suits you or or you may be aware mm -hmm. also but i will try we will our office will try to get you some name of the companies yeah that would be great ashok yeah mm -hmm. yeah thanks no no problem no problem uh, yeah yeah i mean this is what what uh, what uh, uh, conferences and discussions of people are uh, about all about it's all about uh, connect get, getting new connections uh, finding yes. new opportunities and uh, yes yes spreading new developments yeah yes yes yes, yes. no i understand i understand mm -hmm. um, yes okay so we have another 6 minutes so what i will do jorgen i will yes. go through in short 2 minutes or 3 minutes uh, introducing you you can yes be on on the this thing if you want to add up one or two things you can just add up or you want to introduce yourself that's also one of the way uh yes would also be a, a nice opportunity so maybe i can just mention that i yes. will uh, present Please. on the pace in uh, in two weeks and on the aqw as well yeah might be interesting for some of the persons joining yeah sure sure then what i will do i will just start and then i will give it to you you introduce yourself for 2 minutes uh, 5 minutes and then your yep. recorded presentation will be there fantastic yeah okay That's and then great. Yep. join again when the, your presentation is over so you be there in that one so we will meet right. ourselves and uh, we will be there for 33 34 minutes and then there will be a question answer session which i will yep. tell everybody to join in the question answer session mm -hmm. yeah very good all right so then i mute myself now 
no no not necessary not necessary we just wait still the people will join and uh, there is no no hurry and you can be unmute oh. because only two are unmute others are all, all mute okay mm -hmm. yeah i just should make sure that nobody is running through my room <laughs> and, oh no 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 problem no problem that's that's <laughs> Uh, that's part of a live session, yeah. Part <laughs> well, live session, it is, and that's why we keep the recorded presentation so that this is clean presentation. Then yeah. this, yeah. this is like a discussion. This is like like a start of this thing. How do you pronounce your name, Jorgen or Jurgen? Uh, Jurgen, yeah. Jorgen. Jur Jurgen, yes, yeah. Yeah, Jorgen, because that's what I remember. Uh, uh, Jurgen. Okay. Oh, very, very good. <laughs> Good. Jürgen Han. Very good. You have visited India, no? Several times? Oh, yes. Several times. I think first time in India was back to 1996. Wow. So almost almost 30 that. years back. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, must have visited several times later on, no? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we we got that job in in Nalco in nineteen ninety nine, and okay. uh, then we had some regular visits to that, and uh, some presentations, some companies we were looking for a cooperation, and uh, yeah, mm. I think overall I've been at least mm. fifteen twenty times in India. Yeah. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so you know India quite well. Last when did yeah. you travel? Uh, last was uh, was that the, the IBUS uh, three years ago, two years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Mumbai, two thousand eighteen was in Mumbai. No, no, it was it was already after COVID. After COVID, oh, Raipur conference, two thousand. Yeah, I think it was Raipur. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You were in Raipur. Correct, correct. Yeah. I was too busy and I I couldn't talk to you directly. Yeah, yeah, Raipur conference, you will be there. Yeah, you are there. Yeah. That was Good. great, having a conference after COVID, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> person conference, yeah. Okay, so now I think uh, another two minutes and uh, we will just, uh, after two minutes, we will start. You can, you can be there as such, there's no problem. All right. Good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have a presentation by Jurgen Han. And uh, before starting the presentation, I will request Jurgen to talk about his uh, CV, about his experience in the field of filters. Jurgen, to you, please. Yeah, thank you, Ashok, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, yes, my, my name is Jurgen Hahn. I'm based in Karlsruhe, Germany. I have a diploma degree in chemical engineering from the university in Karlsruhe. And I had uh, the, uh, the opportunity to do that uh, with Professor Werner Stahl, who was actually um, heading the Institute of uh, Mechanical Engineering Design at that time. 
And since 1989, um, I'm working for Bokela. For the first 10 years, I did filter retrofits on existing uh, plants uh, with a lot of alumina refineries included. And based on that experience, then we improved uh, the filters and we came up with our own filter designs for disc filters, pan filters, and drum filters. And after that, uh, we restructured the company in the early 2000s. And I became uh, the head of the sales departments and was heading the sales department for almost 20 years. And now towards the end of my career, I'm now the link between all engineering companies and major customers on the world and Bokela. Um, and this is why I'm doing presentations like this and also um, presenting papers on conferences. The next one will be the PACE in Melbourne um, in uh, April, focusing on uh, tailing uh, treatment, followed by the AQW end of April, where I present uh, a paper about the same subject, which is filtration of digester blow off. And now I'll take the word back to Ashok. Thank you. Thanks, Jorgen, for your introduction. Uh, we have now recorded presentation, which was given by Jorgen. And I will request IWAS office to start this recorded presentation. And please note, after this presentation, there will be a live questions and answers. So be there for this presentation. Over to our office, that will uh, start making the recorded presentation. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to the presentation, Filtration of Digester Blow-Off, an option for the next generation refinery design. First of all, a few words about myself. My name is Jürgen Hahn. I'm working for Bokela in Germany. I have a degree of a diploma degree in chemical engineering gained at the University of Karlsruhe in Germany. My current position is product and business development senior manager within Bokela. Well, I actually started um, in 1989 and was doing for almost 10 years filter retrofits, filter optimization, filter modernization um, of all the various types of filters, mainly rotary filters like vacuum, disc, drum and pan filters but also some pressure filters like Kelly filters, tower presses, and so on. And based on uh, that technology and knowledge about bottlenecks of these systems, we were designing our own filter designs, which you see nowadays, for example, with the high performance uh, vacuum disc filter, the um, pen filters with uh, some very interesting features, um, improving operations and uh, process data. And when the company was restructured and growing, um, I became a uh, part member of the sales team. And then for almost 20 years, I was heading the sales team within Bokila. Now getting towards the end of my career, I reduced my work time and I'm now responsible for the communication between Bokela and all engineering companies worldwide. So as part of my work in uh, product development, of course, I'm looking for opportunities um, in new processes. And one opportunity certainly might be to improve the um, alumina refinery process. And what we see here is basically a block flow sheet of an alumina refinery. Um, we see the start of it, which is the bauxite. Um, in some rare cases, uh, it requires filtration because it comes from a pipeline and uh, the uh, water has to be removed prior to digestion. So this is the one end. On the other hand, here we see the red mud disposal. Also here we see uh, more and more um, filter presses in operation. 
And then in the middle of the process, of course, here we see the product that is uh, coming from primary classification. Um, in some refineries, they do a pre delickering on disk and drum filters, but finally uh, it is uh, washed and dried on pan filters prior to calcination. <clears throat> or if we are talking of, about chemical grade, then of course um, there is a target for reducing the moisture as much as possible um, with the with the pan filter, which is possible um, using the watering aid or steam. And then we have all these intermediates like core seed, bind seed, uh, removal of um, oxalate, precipitation of oxalate and filtration of oxalate. But now we want to actually have a more closer look on this part here, digestion, flash tanks, uh, cl uh, clarification and mud settling and mud washing here. So this is basically a bird's view of an alumina refinery. In the very back, we see the precipitation. This is the area for digestion and heat exchange. And here in the front, we see a huge area, just an area of settlers and mud washers. And as you can see, this basically takes about one third of the total footprint uh, of such an alumina refinery. And so, of course, there is uh, the equipment, the many, many uh, mud washers plus the settlers. And there is also the land that is not for free. So let's have a look um, on uh, this part of the process. Here, of course, we see the digestion. So um, it can have low or high temperature digestion. So if it's high temperature, it can go out up to 240 degrees C and the pressure of up to 40 bars. And it doesn't matter whether high pressure or low pressure or high temperature or low temperature digestion, finally we end up in flash tanks. And here in digestion, about 2% of the extractable alumina stays undigested. <clears throat> so this is the first loss um, of alumina or aluminate um, in the total process. Now, after the flash tank, so this is the uh, process as it is at the moment, we have the settlers where we separate the pregnant liquor from the red mud solids. And typical residence time in the settler, we talk about uh, something between um, in extreme conditions, a bit less than one hour, and it can go up to a few hours. And due to the loss in temperature and pressure, there will be a back reaction of aluminate um, precipitating back and getting uh, into the red mud. And here we talk about uh, roughly about a maximum of 2% loss into the red mud in the settler. And then we have the mud washer train where we can lose another 2% due to continued uh, precipitation of aluminate um, and finally ending up in the red mud. So if we sum that all up, we have up to 6% uh, total loss, and about 4% of that is just lost in settlers and washers. And this is basically because settling and washing at the moment is done under atmospheric conditions uh, with a maximum temperature of, say, roughly about 100 degrees C. So what opportunities do we have? How much of these 4% are we able? to gain back. So this is an alternative flow sheet. So instead of our mud settlers up here, 
we just go from one of the flash tanks into a pressure filter through a one-step filtration. So that means that we remove a majority of pregnant liquor and we release the solids and then have just a much smaller red mud, um, mud, uh, mud washer train. So that means we don't have to go to atmosphere. We can, for example, go out here with anything, let's say between five and 10 bar and feed into the filter here. <clears throat> and then we have a residence time. So first of all, of course, we stay under pressure. As mentioned, can be anything between um, five and 10 bar. And um, the residence time in the filter is just a few minutes. So because we keep the pressure high, the back reaction doesn't really start and the residence time uh, helps further. So the target is to reduce the loss of aluminate um, in settlers and washers from 4% to less than 1%. So that would already be um, a good improvement in CapEx. So this is the basic idea. So what are the challenges and what are the duties? So as mentioned, of course, the duty simply is filtration within minutes and under pressure to minimize loss of already dissolved aluminum into red mud. And the second is remove as much pregnant liquor from solids as possible. So what are the challenges? The challenges are cake wash on disk filter is as possible. Filtration of up to 200 degrees C, depending on which um, flash tank we use for the operation or for the extraction or for the move uh, into the filter. Um, is it possible to uh, an operation without air? Then low feed solids. We just talk about something of 50 to maximum 200 grams per liter. And the material of the filter cloth, of the filter fabric. It has to withstand all these conditions. So let's go through these challenges step by step and see what is already available and what needs further development. Here we see a vacuum disc filter in an alumina refinery separating fine seed. And um, we see that the cake is washed. So this is one of the very few filters in the world, one of the very few vacuum disc filters on the world working with cake wash. So we see cake wash is possible. It's already working in alumina refineries, but at the moment on disc filters only under vacuum conditions, so not under pressure conditions. So the second challenge is high pressure, high temperature. So we are talking anything between 110 and 200 degrees C. So what is already available? What we see here is the principle of our Bohaiba filters operating in terephthalic acid production. In terephthalic acid production, the feed to the filter comes at a temperature of 160 degrees C. So very similar to the conditions of the digester blow off. Um, we do a three stage counter current wash in this filter. As you can see, this is basically the fresh washing liquid here at the third wash zone. The filtrate is then this filtrate is then collected here um, in this filtrate separator and fed to the second wash zone, the green one, 
This filtrate here from the green zone is collected in the green separator and is now fed to the first wash zone. So this is already a three-stage counter-current wash. Um, so what we see is, and, and on the other hand, we go in with 160 degrees C. If we would go straight in the separators to atmosphere, we would get flashing of the liquid. So these separators are all using back pressure. So that means the acting pressure difference in the filter is just the difference between the pressure inside of the vessel, which is the pressure in the filter vessel, um, minus the back pressure on each of the separators. And depending on the temperature, of course, we have slightly different back pressures. And also, this has to do with the vapor pressure. So it's all a question, how far do we want to go? When does the material start to flash? This is the back pressure that we need in these separators. And to illustrate that, we have actually um, just listed the vapor pressure of water um, and the uh, and the respective uh, boiling temperature. So this is already something that is in operation and that works. And here we see such a filter in terephthalic acid production. And you see um, the the solids get really very dry. You can see a little bit of, uh, of dust even uh, running down from the surface of this filter. So this is already a technology that is available. We have about roughly something between um, 60 and 80 of these filters in operation at the moment. Just a final word to the um, process conditions of these four high bar drum filters in terephthalic acid production. So here we see the pressure in the vessel between three and six bar. The feed temperature, depending on the uh, feed pressure, between 145 to 165 degrees. A solid throughput, typical solid throughput on one of these units is about 82 tons per hour. So you see, we also talk about significant production rates, even on filters that have not more than 26 square meter filtration area. So the solids in the feed, of course, they are higher than what we would expect with uh, digester blow off here. We talk about something around 40 weight percent. The cake moisture um, is maximum 8%. In many cases, it goes down to 5 or 6%. The wash efficiency is more than 90%. And the overall wash ratio is maximum of 0.4, more close at the moment to 0.6 in operation. So we see this is already a technology that is in operation since almost 10 years now. And so this is a proven technology on four high bar drum filters. Now, what are the other challenges? Yes. One, of course, is the low feed solids. I mean, we are talking now about 50 to maximum 200 grams per liter. What does that mean? The lower the feed solids, the more filtration area is required or the more filtration units are required. So this at the end will be a, a question of capex. Um, we can certainly um, compare the capex of more filters or less filters if we use pressure decanters. So this is certainly an option and requires some comparison um, in a pre-feasibility study. Further challenges, of course, is the filter fabric. 
we talk about high costly content, pH 15, high temperature. The available materials are very little. At the moment, we see um, the peak or the PTFE as possible materials or already talking to filter fabric suppliers, there might be also new developments for this particular application. So we have seen that uh, pressure filtration, rotary pressure filtration um, is already working under these conditions on drum filters, um, the ones that we see here on the right hand side where the pressure vessel is now open. So we can see here the flange of the bottom part and the top part is taken off. So we also see that we have very good access uh, to this filter type uh, for maintenance reasons. On the other hand, of course, we also have the disc filters for which we don't have um, um, operations with cake wash, but uh, operation and also not operations at high temperature. So we would actually need to use the experience for high temperature from drum filters or cake wash from the vacuum disc filters. So at the moment, it looks more like we need to combine already known um, operating uh, ways of operation of these filters um, into these um, hyperbaric disk filter units. But the beauty, of course, is why we are limited here to about 26 square meter maximum. We can actually establish um, almost six times that filtration area, getting 168 square meters with the biggest fiber disk filter units. And this is the principles of a high bar filter. So, and it doesn't matter whether this is a drum or a disk filter. It's always this setup that we see here, starting with the number one. Number one, the compressor. This is basically the uh, driving a gas, which can be air, which can be um, a neutral gas, which can be steam, that generates the pressure difference required for filtration and drying. Then, of course, we have the slurry that is pumped into the pressurized compartment, into the filter trough or bath that we see here. Um, of course, there is an option with steam cabins, the orange parts that cover a fraction of the disc here is actually the steam cabin. So we see that um, there is an individual steam cabin for each disc. But this is just an option that we don't think we need at the moment for digester blow off filtration. Then of course we have the filter as such, which in this case here is a disc filter, the number five with the control head here and the lines for form zone and dry zone filtrates. Then we have the pressure vessel number six here. And there is no number here for the chain conveyor that moves the solids that are discharged from the filter um, and moves the solids into the solids release system, which is called the discharge sluice here. We have the filtrate separator number seven, where the air is um, either uh, returned with a compressor back into the filter or released to atmosphere. And the filtrate number 10 is actually um, released at the bottom. We have the tank for cake blow off, which has a slightly higher pressure compared to the pressure inside of the vessel. And we have the solids release system, the discharge sluice, which is a two gate system, um, releasing the solids from the pressurized compartment to atmosphere. And number 11 is the hopper where the solids drop in to be distributed on a conveyor belt. From the principle now to the real filter which we see in operation here. 
um, very similar to the vacuum disk filter with a cake discharge with air blowback at a slightly higher pressure. And here we see the discharge of the solids from the solid release system. So, high bar disk filters are already in operation in alumina refineries. They separate bauxite after pipeline transport in Brazil, for example. And they separate the bauxite solids from the liquid. And then discharge that uh, with moistures at a level of 12 to 14 percent. So this is already um, a technology that is available. It doesn't have cake wash at the moment, and it does not work at temperatures above 100 degrees. But certainly it is, of course, there. Now, what does that mean, um, having high bar disk and drum filters? already available on the market, already in operation in different applications. What does that mean for digester blow-off? Let's have a look on the 1 million ton of alumina operation, which correlates to about 2 million tons of red mud. So in terms of tons per hour, that means around 250 tons per hour of solids to be filtered. And um, in this comparison, we simply consider that we are using a pressure decanter to increase the solids in the filter fee to about 400 to 500 grams per liter. So that means we can expect on the one side, on the vacuum disk filter, oh, sorry, on the high bar disk filter side, we can expect on the units having up to 168 square meter, a total solid throughput per unit of about 100 to 150 tons per hour. And keeping the 250 tons total solid throughput in mind, we would need two filters in operation and, of course, one standby for maintenance, caustic cleaning, and so on. So, as you see, this is not a real big number and the uh, Building size that you see, of course, is nothing compared to the washer train that we have seen at the beginning of the presentation. But we can also continue with the high bar drum filters, filters that already operate at temperatures of 160 degrees C, and filters that definitely can do cake wash, no doubt about. So here the biggest units are the XL26, uh, filters with 26 square meter filtration area. That means we talk about a solid throughput per unit of about 20 to 25 tons per hour, which means we have 10 filters operating plus two standby, maybe one or two more. So now um, that explains very well um, having two, 10 filters in operation or having two filters in operation, why at the moment we are targeting um, to get the disk filter type um, into this operation. So, now finally, um, having again a look onto a possible flow sheet. So starting here on the left-hand side, we have our digester blow off here. We've or I've already mentioned the option of a pressure decanter to increase the solids content and reduce the sizes of filters. <clears throat> so then we would actually feed one first one, one stage of high bar filtration. Um, we could certainly um, add some wash condensate that would, let's say, uh, remove the pregnant liquor from about 60 to 80 percent of the void volume from the cake. And that would give us about um, an extraction of somewhere between 95 to 98 percent 
of the pregnant liquor from the digester blow of slurry in that one go. <clears throat> well, typically, um, if we um, filter on such a high bar filter, the filtrate solids would quite likely be in the range of somewhere between one and five grams per liter. So I understand that at the moment, the uh, uh, settlers are producing something more like uh, 300 to 500 ppm. So that means we would get a much more solids to the polishing filtration. So that means on the other hand, we would not replace polishing filtration, we would actually load a bit more load on the polishing filtration. Now, when we discharge the solids here, they still contain, as mentioned, probably about 2% of pregnant liquor. So we would still need um, some red mud washers, maybe one, maybe two, um, to extract uh, the remaining aluminate as good as the existing mud washer train does. But considering that we are going um, into a final red mud washer stage, we would actually require to re-slurry the red mud solids prior to actually get into that smaller, shorter uh, washer train. So in this case, we don't have to discharge the solids um, through a discharge sluice. We can simply connect um, at the bottom of the pressure vessel, uh, an agitated reslurry tank. And then this reslurry tank would be under pressure, under the same pressure as the filter itself. So we, we would not need the discharge system, which is also a quite expensive part of the filter. We could actually reslurry in a pressurized reslurry tank and then uh, release the pressure to the remaining mud washer uh, train. So that would be the first step of a new flow sheet. But we can even go one step further. So we still have that first step up here where we actually uh, provide the digester blow of slurry into a first high bar filter. But now we could still re use that uh, pressure reslurry tank, but now feed into a second high bar filter. And that second high bar filter would, of course, um, reduce the remaining aluminate to very likely less than what the existing red mud uh, washer train is doing. So we would actually extract a bit more of the aluminate that is already in the, that is already dissolved. We could again use the uh, further wash to realize that. And of course, um, some of the filtrate would be uh, used for the reslurry. So the benefit now would be in more and more alumina refineries, the red mud is filtered prior to disposal. And it's filtered with pressure filtration. Now, this is exactly what we have here. So we would actually do two jobs with this second stage um, high bar filter. We would on the one side, we would actually remove more uh, pregnant liquor than the existing washer train is doing and we would produce a filtrate, sorry, a solids that has similar um, moisture as the filter solids that are discharged from the existing uh, filter presses. So we would not even, we would not just replace the washer train and the, um, and the settlers, we would also replace with this system the existing um, filter presses that are filtering the red mud. 
And there I see a big benefit in both CAPEX and OPEX. And this is the challenge of the future to really go into more details, into more um, calculations of how much um, OPEX reduction, how much CAPEX reduction is possible, how much more production in terms of alumina do we get from a fixed amount of bauxite if we introduce uh, pressure filtration into digester blow off. So thank you very much for your attention. And now it's time for questions and answers, and I'm sure there are a few. Thank you. Thanks, Jorgen, for a nice presentation. Now the session is open for discussion and questions and answers. Please go ahead. You are welcome to ask questions to Jorgen. Please. Shankar, please go ahead. Sound, your sound is not there. Hi, hi, Yugan. Hi, Ashok. Yes, hi. Yeah, very interesting presentation. Yeah. Very, very, very nice concept. I, I hope uh, some companies pick up this and uh, go forward. Then, uh, my, my guess is probably the new plants. I mean, the, the whole existing plants may not be able to convert or justify. The, I think the, the new plants, good. Good. Yeah, Sangha, thank you very much for that feedback. And uh, we are also uh, in discussion at the moment with uh, two major producers about that opportunity. And so see how that develops, yes. OK. Uh, OK, Mr. Basin. yeah. Yeah, hi, Mr. Jordan. I saw your presentation, but sorry, I missed out a few slides in the beginning. And uh, hello, Nandi sir, thank you for giving us opportunity to, to attend this. Please. Uh, actually, I have come up with some of our requirement uh, of plant. So uh, I'll tell you, uh, I saw your presentation. I mean, there are two factors which are important in your process of filtration of any gate. One is temperature and another is pressure. Uh, actually, we are generating uh, a kind of byproduct called gypsum. Uh, gypsum is in slurry form. And uh, in slurry, actually, uh, the, the moisture is around 45 to 50 percent. Moisture is 45 to 50 percent, and our generation of uh, gypsum is around in on wet basis. It is 700 metric ton per day, and uh, we want to reduce its, its moisture from uh, 50 percent to 25 percent. So once we we produce uh, we reduce the moisture that dry gypsum we can we can uh, supply to the cement industry where we are giving it actually the okay. major concern of ours is a moisture removal with the present system actually we are using filter cake technology that press filter press technology to make mm -hmm. the cake so in that filter cake technology, we are not able to reduce that much moisture. This is the bottleneck what we have it in process. So I mean, I request you to just share your thoughts and you can give a kind of calculations to us where we, we can go ahead with the capex and opex required to, to go ahead for this. So uh, please, I mean, you can say something on it. Like. Uh, yes, Sanjeev, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, I understand, uh, yes, uh, you do, you, you filter a gypsum slurry on filter yeah. presses and get a moisture of 45 to 50% at the moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have also done uh, tests with the different gypsums 
And so there is a quite a wide range as, a, as far as I remember with regard to capacity and moisture. Yeah. That pretty much depends on the on the particle size distribution of the gypsum, which also in various applications has really a wide range. Yeah. But uh, if you get uh, 45 to 50 percent on filter presses, um, certainly if you go into a high bar filter, uh, we are talking about much thinner cakes, mm -hmm. so much shorter uh, filtration times, and we always have the opportunity on a hyperbar on a hyperbaric filter that we only have a small layer of cake and we go uh, with and we have the air ahead of the cake and that penetrates the cake and the pores and removes the liquid mm -hmm. if we do the same on the filter presses of course the air is only um, um, going through a part of the cake and uh, there is the um, uh, the uh, it, it's not like just 10 millimeter of uh, of uh, way for the for the air to to go through. It's a much it's a much longer way, and so there is uh, predominant areas uh, uh, that uh, are dewatered, and other areas are not dewatered on filter presses. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I would already expect a better moisture on the high bar filters. It it's not that dramatic lower to bring that from 50 percent to 25 percent so okay. my expectation would be more that we would get just below the 40 percent moisture say 35 to 40 percent but now comes the big extra point um, during the presentation i could show that we have steam cabins on our filters and this is a technology that we use since well, almost uh, 20 years now on both vacuum filters and high bar filters. Mm -hmm. And when we apply steam to the filter cake prior to the final dewatering, then mm -hmm. we get three extra um, benefits. Uh, number one is if we have a steam atmosphere mm -hmm. and steam tries to penetrate the cake, then there is a reduced surface tension because we have no air at that point of uh, filtration so it's with no surface tension of the liquid the penetration mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, of a gas into the cake is better and faster mm -hmm. and then secondly of course your your slurry your cake is cold or ambient temperature and now the in contact with steam it immediately heats up on the surface and also the remaining liquid between the particles heats up to steam or condensation temperature okay. and that reduces the viscosity and increases the drainage of that remaining liquid mm -hmm. and then at the end you've seen the, the steam cabin covers only a part of the disc and then the remaining part of the disc is still using compressed air for further drying mm -hmm. and so we get a better a faster drainage of the remaining liquid plus a little bit of uh, of um, a thermal drying in the cake as well and mm -hmm. typically what we see is from the remaining liquid we remove about 40 to 50 percent of that liquid if we apply steam in comparison to not using steam mm -hmm. so having that in mind if i get your moisture from 50 to 40 and then i remove another 40 to 50 percent of that remaining liquid then mm -hmm. i would be at a moisture of 25 to 20 percent that's that's exactly your target moisture so i mm -hmm. think it'd be great to have a sample and test that in the laboratory mm -hmm. and uh, just confirm that expectation okay understood so i mean uh, another uh, the other way of asking a question to you uh, whatever the present technologies you have it to remove the moisture i mean to do the caking what efficiency you expect from the system like uh, of course i mean 50 percent is moisture is very high uh, and uh, we want to reduce it 25 and presently we are able to reduce it to 32 something like so seven percent moisture difference is there so in the present system, in fact, we can go ahead for some of the additional step where we can remove another five to seven percent of moisture. So we can achieve. So like addition to our present filter press setup. 
we can put one one more step over there where the cakes of the filter press will come as a feed to your system and where we will reduce the rest of the 7 to 10 percent of moisture so that kind of thing also can be work it out uh, no you you cannot add our our filter um, at the discharge of the filter press because mm -hmm. we also need a slurry to form a proper cake okay and, and so our our filter system would be well uh, instead of using filter presses okay so what is the starting uh, moisture i can expect in your feed and what is the outcome we can have it i mean the the ingoing moisture is basically is basically the slurry so it can be anything from 10% solids all the way up to 60% solids, depending on, on uh, what, what are your conditions okay. um, of the slurry uh, with the gypsum solids in there. Yeah. Actually, the consistency of our uh, gypsum is just like a uh, little bit lesser than the red mud cake. OK, but what I wanted to say is um, use the, the, what you feed at the moment to the filter press is what you would feed to our filters as well. Okay. So there is there is basically no difference. What we are, what we provide is just a different filtration or filter type that no. does allow for reaching lower moistures. Okay, so uh, I'll share my requirement as well as the sample to you. Do you have any setup to prove this technology in India within India? No, unfortunately not. Uh, we a couple of years back we had a partner in India, but that partnership uh, was stopped for a couple of reasons. So mm -hmm. at the moment, all testing is uh, is done exclusively here in uh, Germany. Okay, so I'll share the detail to you, and uh, we can share yeah. sample to you in future also in order to proceed further. Yep, yeah, that would be Jordan. great. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thanks, Thank sir. you, Sanjeev. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please have a direct discussion and uh, we can provide you his coordinates and, and the presentation is available on IWAS website. And okay. uh, similar as your uh, problem in red mud also, bauxite residue also, reduction of moisture content helps us to sell in the cement plant. So yeah. this, this is a great thing because many of this alumina refinery have moisture content 20-25%. But if we are able to reduce it to 5% or 8%, it will directly go to cement plant. Anyway, uh, please uh, open for questions. Please ask some more questions to Jürgen. You are welcome. Please. Any more questions? Anybody wants to ask questions? Anyway, Jorgen, uh, your presentation will be available on IWAS website. If there are some questions coming to us, we will just forward it to you. Our office, uh, Priyanka, will uh, forward you all the questions. And uh, this presentation will be available at website uh, for uh, some time. So thank you very much for your attention. And you have come and delivered this thing. We hope you will join some of the IWAS conferences. You are welcome. <laughs> And yes, thank you, Ashok, and thank you for having that opportunity. And as you mentioned, the next IBAS conference in Goa, this is a, a very attractive venue to go to. <laughs> you are welcome. Welcome. Still, you, are, you have a long time to think. You are welcome. Andre, if, have you any questions? First time I am seeing you in this lecture series. Andre Panov. No, oh, he has a Hello. Hello, Andre. Hello, hello. Hello, Andre. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. Hi, uh, Andre. How are you, Jurgen? I unfortunately I could not hear your uh, full presentation because I had some problems connecting. But I think uh, this is a good uh, and promising path, and this is uh, more or less the same uh, paper which you present at Exoba. But I think the more is uh, you present at different forums is the better because people know uh, this idea and start to think also in this direction. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and uh, so I uh, look forward to get uh, any more um, data from the field trials as soon as you, you have it. <laughs> yes, it will take a little bit more time to get to field trials at the moment. Mm. But, uh, well, that's basically the, the target, yeah. Mm. Okay. And Andre, I've seen I've seen you on the uh, on the presentation on the presenters list of the AQW. I think uh, we are in the same session on Wednesday um, in uh, in Dubai. <laughs> yes, most probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Thanks, everybody. And. And uh, uh, we will continue our monthly presentation, and this will be given on the site. Thanks, Andre. It's good to meet Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.